There it is. The recording started. Now we're official. Hi, I got to pay attention. <laughs> First one of the new year, AT Town Hall. If you were here two minutes ago, you heard Alyssa say that the, <laughs> the new year was like months ago, it feels like. I don't know what happened. Suddenly we're at January 11th. And yep. I hear you. I'm still getting used to the two zero followed by the two one. I haven't quite gotten it down when writing reports yet. Yeah. Oh, I, I have no problem leaving the two zero behind. I'm all good. Yeah. Well, yeah, not that I want to go backwards in time. I'm leaning into the um, auto prediction in every writing software I use that auto predicts the date for me because then I actually get 2021 in. That's a good plan. I like that. <sighs> Problems. Last year, I've lost months. <laughs> yes. All right, guys. So we have a couple things we could chat about. We could chat about our new conference that's coming up. We could check in and see what people did to kind of recharge in the break. That feels like it was years ago. Um, I don't know if you want to relive that. I almost don't want to relive that week where I didn't do any work because it feels so far away. <laughs> it's just making me sad. Uh, but if you didn't know, we're gonna we're gonna host a a unconference at the end of the month called the AT Retreat, and it's happening on the 29th, which is a Friday. Um, this event is is sandwiched into the two weeks of ATIA um, because typically when we're at ATIA, we do an ed camp on the Friday night. And so this kind of replaces that event, calls it something a little different um, and changes it into a completely virtual event. Um, so that's pretty exciting. So, Wait a second, let me share with you guys the link. Sorry, I'm digging around my computer to find the link. Um, I made us a full on web page for it. Look at you being productive this That weekend. was my productive weekend work. That was it. I felt that was pretty good. So here it is. Here's the AT retreat web page and so we need those links when you guys. get there it, it is not its own website it is I, piggybacked onto the at chat website i was just gonna ask should we link it to the at chat website but link, link schmink i just built it right on there <laughs> i love it i love it nice nice i'm glad that kelly and i uh that, that didn't have to do anything for it i appreciate yeah. that i felt like that was a good use of the at chat website actually agreed yeah I thought so too. I was going to make its own website and I was like, well, that's kind of silly. That other ET chat website is right there. Uh, so it, it, many of the people that are on the call right now are actually were there with us on Friday when we had our discussion about organizing this event. And so I took a lot of that stuff from our conversation and um, put it on that website here. I'll share it. So in case you want to see, there's the website and couple things on there. The link for the ticket seems pretty important. So that's an Eventbrite page just so that we can collect your information so we can turn around and sell it to something. No, so that we can email you as we get close, all the details. Uh, but it is a free event on January 29th. We thought as a group it would start at about four in the afternoon. Is that still working for people? I hold that thought. The day, the times might change. The day is going to be set. It's going to be a late afternoon kind of thing. We thought after work, um, the times can change as we go. Um, we did have an idea of, of adding a brainstorming board. It, typically when we do the ed camp at ATIA, we have a bulletin board that sits out there in the hallway with index cards and, and Sharpies. And people go by and they write down an idea about a session and they pin it to the board. And then when we come together on Friday night, we take those ideas and transfer them to the actual schedule. Uh, and so this is trying to replicate that as best as possible. And here we go, look at that. As I talk, someone's adding to the board. Um, so that's our idea with that. So the brainstorming board, 
will feed into the actual schedule. I can't move until I see what this person writes. Ah, that's ah. a good little question. What Ooh, was so good? That. That what was, was really so good. good about virtual learning that we could take it back? I like it. That was good. I like that. I also have to comment, Mike, about your colored tabs on the top of Google Chrome. I, I very much enjoy that. Oh, thank you. I, you. As you put that out there and I saw that and I, I now use that all the time and it's successfully covering the, I don't know, roughly 85 tabs I have open right now. I need that. I need that. Why not do wait, that? Wait, How do we do that? How do How we do right, do that? right Look, click up on the top? Right up, click on any tab. And it will ask you to add to a group add tab to group so you can have your groups established or you can make a new group right there and then um and it doesn't have 40 bazillion colors but you know i would hope that you don't have more than the what three six nine i suppose you there's not really a limit to the number of tabs but at a certain tab groups but at a certain point it becomes less helpful if you don't if you have more than five or six i would think yeah yeah. Um, may but, have just changed. I mean, that <laughs> along with Cassie's tips may have just changed my life again. Yeah, it's, this one is this it's, one is a life together. Yeah, for a visual person, it's hugely helpful because I may still have multiple windows open so that I can kind of get where I need to go, but I have them organized in a way where when I'm working on a specific project, I have all the tabs kind of living in one home that I don't have to kind of go, where did I open that tab to? Yes. Has, okay. So quick question on that. Has anybody found a way that like, if so, the tab that Mike has open now, if you drag it to a different window, it takes it out from underneath that category for me. Has anybody yeah. found a way around that? No. Because then I have to remember to put it back yeah. under and I'm great. not great at that. Yeah, I agree. I haven't found a way to kind of reconnect it to that except right clicking and reconnecting it. Or drag it, you can just drag it back underneath too. And yeah, and then, yeah, and then reconnect it that way. I yeah, just but have to remember, which I'm yeah, not. But let me ask in the Google trainers group and see if anybody knows. Okay. I'll, yeah. I'll ask. It that. would be cool if it would keep that, you know, designation wherever. Outside of a new, in a new window. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That Sorry, I didn't, I, didn't... I didn't mean to digress from your entire yeah. thing. I just... <laughs> I noticed it on Friday when we met and I was like, oh, I like, I like seeing implementation of an idea. Yes, it is. It's a, it's a solid implementation because I find that when I'm planning to be in a meeting or some kind of conversation, I open a bunch of things so that I'm ready to talk, but then they're all kind of just scattered through. And usually I'm just sorting them as I go, but now I'm just dumping them in. And then I know that all of the tabs I don't want you guys to see are under that mic tab and I can just leave them to the side <laughs> and I don't have to worry about why does he have 14 Amazon tabs? Now, now everybody wants yeah. to know what's under yeah. the mic tab. You I'm I just told you it's 14 Amazon <laughs> tabs. It's three tabs from Wayfair. It's something about how to fix my truck. It's all nonsense. So it all sits to the side. So Mike, do you find that this is easier to organize versus one tab? Because I kind of do this with my one tab. Like I have the like, for certain ones. And then I'll just open up the one tab in a separate window and then that will be open. So do you find that this is easier, the grouping? I do. I find that, you know, Cheryl, I don't use one tab as much okay. myself because I, I find I don't go back to some of those pages and then I find myself opening them anyway, like again. Yeah. Uh, and so this does feel better because I, I like the idea that these tabs are very task specific for me. Yeah. And I like that. Um, and then I can just dump a bunch of stuff under them. And then yeah. anything that's beyond the tabs is stuff that doesn't need to be sorted yet. My mail, my yeah. calendar, Twitter, all that other nonsense right. um, that I can kind of leave out. But yeah, I really like, I really like this. This is a, such a great little tip. I also found Cheryl, since you mentioned one tab. Yes. If you collapse these into one tab, like right now, if I hit one tab and brought them into one page yeah. and then I expanded them all back out, all the groups are gone. Okay. It takes everything yeah. out of the group and it just gives me the 50 tabs or whatever I had Ooh. open. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> Which I found out when I did that for a demo in a session, I one tabbed it all. And then when I went to restore it, I, I lost all of my groupings. 
Okay. I That's may too bad. I'll be setting up all of my tabs in this. Yeah, may or may not. Yeah. And I know that it's one of those features that was like somebody in Google was playing around and like thought, hey, let's see if we can do this. Um, and I'm hoping that they they continue because I know that there's been some conversation about it in the Google trainers group about, hey, we really like it. We're wondering if they're continuing to grow it. Um, so I'm hoping that it's it's one of those things that sticks from a Google accessibility perspective, mm -hmm. um, even though it probably was just somebody sitting around working on their random project that they just wanted to see, hey, can I make it do this? Yeah, I agree. This feels like it grew out of somebody's whim, but it would be great if it was kind of refocused into an accessibility support for organization and task completion, because it feels like it could be that way. It, anytime I show it now, I'm showing it as as a built-in accessibility. It falls into my category of it's not, but it is, but it's not, but it really is. It's like that cook category because they don't call it that, but really, if you think about it, that's what it's doing. Yeah. One of my favorite little tips, Alyssa. You 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 have impacted my screen every day. So thank you. Well, that was fun. That was a nice little diversion. That was fun. <laughs> Sorry, back to your regular schedule of program. Welcome oh. to the town hall, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Did I just start something like, I mean, you know, whatever. It's all good. It doesn't okay. matter. It's fine. <laughs> it's great. Back to the conference. Brainstorming, like the one idea that was just dropped up there, which is awesome. We'll take those ideas. What we'll probably try to do, the, the people in the meeting on Friday as we were talking, our thought would be was that we would do something very similar to what we do at the ed camp at ATIA, where as people start to post ideas, if they start to feel similar, we'll group them together a little bit um, and then work to insert them into the schedule, which is below, which is just a, it's just a Google sheet, but it has the links to all of the information. Um, and, and, you know, it, I think if you've attended any virtual conference that I've run, this is the conference template that I use every time. Um, it's the sessions. We'll drop the Zoom links into it um, probably the day before or the day of. Um, we'll drop the Zoom links in. Every session will have its own Zoom link as well as its own collaborative session note document that you can go in and share notes throughout the session. Um, the group, we talked about the idea of doing 25 minute sessions. These are ed camp style sessions. No real leader, no presentations, probably no slides. I would prefer no slides, but you know, I'm, I don't want to be heavy handed and tell people what to do. But the idea is that you're talking about a conversation. It's not someone presenting something to you. Uh, and so that lends itself to just kind of the the grid on the screen of all the heads and we just talk to each other. Uh, if someone wants to share a screen to show something that's probably different that that seems acceptable but you know otherwise it, no one should be sharing a bunch of PowerPoint or Google slides um, in one of these sessions. And so we'll have a handful of breakout sessions. We'll have six different rooms, uh, five different session times uh, and then some kind of wrap up. You know, we talked about an idea of a wrap up. What did you learn? How are you going to apply it kind of thing? Maybe a little smack down, some prizes, and then everybody leaves. I was going to say everybody leaves and you go home, but newsflash, you're going to be home already. So you just shut your computer off and walk away and you're already home. So that's our plan. So hopefully you will sign up. I see people signing up now because I'm getting notifications on my watch as I sit here. So that's always good. Uh, so pretty exciting. I like the idea of this. I, I, you guys know, if you know me, you know I love a good, a good ed camp. I, I'm a big fan of the idea of, of just sharing um, in this kind of unconference um, mode, if you will. So that's the plan for the unconference. The link is in the chat if you want to sign up. Um, Oh, Eastern time zone. Yes, sorry, Jennifer, yes. <laughs> Did Cassie say as of now? What does that mean, Cassie? Like we're gonna change the time zone at some point? It, it We tend to change things from time to time. So I'm not saying anything for sure. <laughs> yes. As of now makes things safe or yet. 
I like that. Just yes, at this moment. Yeah, no, we'll we'll go Eastern time zone. Um, and we thought that kind of late afternoon so that people could work and then come in at the at the end, you know, we'll kind of wrap up by dinner time. It, it's very similar to our Ed Camp at ATIA, which I like. I think is good. I, I think that it, that it keeps some kind of um, what we've already established as a way of, of sharing information. And if you're attending ATIA, it's perfect. Use it in the same way we would the Ed Camp. You know, you learned things all week. How are you going to apply them? How have they changed your thought process of how to do things with technology? Um, if you're not going to ATIA, well, that's fine too. Um, you, you can, can still, still come, come to this, if, even if you're not going to eat. Although there is lots of ATIA that is free. I mean, that's the, the other good thing. It's, this is, there's lots of ATIA components that are not, that don't cost anything. Yeah, yeah, I agree. If you haven't gone and, and kind of dug around the conference website yet for ATIA, check that out. Uh, there is some, some really great stuff there. Um, and I think admittedly, unfortunately, it's not super easy to navigate. I find it very convoluted. I'm seeing lots of head shaking. So I yeah. feel a little bit better because I was like, I, if I were organizing this and making this little LMS, like this would not be how I laid it out. It's like 14 steps to get to anywhere. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, I think being able to go and dig for the free stuff. I don't know, Beth, if you know a good way to get there, like, is there a certain, is there, is there currently a lesson picks or something other code that shoots you to the free registration or how, uh, no, how I does mean, that I work? Have a, I have a lesson picks code, although somebody told me the other day it wasn't working. So I need to email them and find out. I mean, there's a bunch of discount codes that are out there. Um, the vendor hall itself isn't open yet, right? That'll be open and it'll be free during the conference. But they um, still have to register in to the... Register. LMSE thing to get there. Yeah, you just go to, yeah, go to ATIA.org and, and um, you can register, but there are, there's a number of, um, they've made the vendor hall, a lot of different vendor presentations, all free. Um, and I know vendor presentations, you know, although I promise you the lesson picks vendor presentation is not, is not your typical vendor presentation. Um, <laughs> I'd like to dig into that, that a little bit more, but all right, that's fine. <laughs> just tossing that one out there. Not just a, it's not just a how to or to, it, you know, you guys know me, if you know, like the book that Mike and Chris and Karen and I have written, it's all about the strategies and not about the tool. And so, so is my presentation about the strategies. Um, I just happen to demonstrate it within the tool of lesson picks, but you can do a lot of it in other tools too. Just, I'd like to encourage all of you that are having trouble navigating the ATIA site to give that input to ATIA immediately. Um, I know that uh, uh, Amy Goldman and I have um, have sent a couple of emails about it, and I think the earlier they know about it, I, it would just be a shame that uh, um, people miss out on the free activities and the schedule in general because they give up on the site. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with Judy. It, it, it is, and I agree with everyone else too. It's tricky. I just went on there the other day to try to find my own session because I couldn't remember what it was called because I wanted to like start thinking about my handout. Start thinking about my handout. <laughs> nice, um, nice. You know, do start. Friday. Mm -hmm. Start. It's fine. I got all week. It's only Monday. Um, I couldn't find my own session and I knew how to spell my name. I knew where I, I kind of knew the general idea. And it took, it took me a handful of minutes to figure that out where Absolutely. it was. Um, and, and I have to say on top of that, I was helping, trying to help a high school eye gaze user mm -hmm. register for the free portion. He heck no, like not accessible at all. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Leslie, that's kind of what we ended up doing for him is I was like, let me look into how best to get you set up. Because obviously doing this is not, mm, yeah, not accessible. So yeah. it's kind of a sad commentary on the fact that it's supposed to be an AT. Again, so then take action and, and uh, give them that feedback um, sooner rather than later. Yeah. And I think that's a really good point. If those of us that are familiar with the website and have navigated conferences in the past are having a hard time 
you know, the average person who's going in to just see it for the first time is going to get completely lost if we're spending this much time doing it. Yeah, I think it's a really good point. I, I um, am going to be working with them throughout the conference as a room monitor, which is just funny in itself, but I will be the voice of, of authority in the room, which is awesome. Um, and our meeting is tomorrow and I'll bring that up with them as, you know, I'll, I'll let them know that we talked about this and, you know, people were having some of these struggles, including myself. I, I mean, I'll share my own struggle as I go through it. Um, Isn't our meeting on the 14th? I don't know what's on the 14th. Judy, I'm staring right at you. What's at the 14th? The monitor meetings. For oh, the it's not tomorrow? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> the good thing, Judy, you're here to, uh, to, to keep Mike in line. <laughs> That's great, Judy. Thanks. I think it's, to, I think it's uh, Thursday the 14th. Judy, I have a lot of issues in my calendar right now. I have it listed for tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday. Was it I'm one of those where several they said, times with yeah. them apparently this week to talk? <laughs> Mike's an overachiever or a problem really child. Depends on how my... you look at it. Could be overachiever, could be problem child. I, I just... It could be old meeting notices that I never erased out of my calendar. There could be any number of things there. All right. Let's not turn this into a bash me. How about that web page I made for the unconference? Let's, let's refocus. Super fantastic. Super fantastic. You know, one and more thing about the ATIA thing before, before we move on to something else, if that's what we're going to do. Um, I feel like the day of the conference, it will probably be much easier to navigate through than it will be. Pro that's my thought as, as we get to the days I don't know why I feel that, but I just feel like it's going to be easier to figure out because that day, you know, it's like, here's where you are today and here's everything that's happening. I find it's hard to see this ahead of time, like the bigger picture of everything that's going to happen. So kind of interesting. And Irene, Irene mentioned in the chat, um, I think it was the quiet list or someplace she posted the um, Google sheet that she kind of went through. Uh, yep. There's a big long link there, which I think takes you to it. Oh, thank you. Um, but uh, it's a it's a Google Sheet that she went through, and um, not Irene, but what's her name, Edna Joe, went mm -hmm. through and kind of like you have to go in and make a copy. But she took the entire ATIA and made it a schedule so that you could go in and kind of see across the everything what is when. Which it must have been like easy. hours of yeah. work. It's pretty nicely organized. Yeah, it's really well done. And it was from the quiet, the quiet, the quiet listener. Yeah, thanks, Irene. Yeah, that's good stuff. If you haven't seen it yet, definitely check that out. I have and, that saved on my computer to use. That's much easier. And jumping back to the unconference for a second, I did send out an email this morning to everybody who was on the planning list that has the Zoom link for Friday. If you didn't get it or you're interested in joining, just let me know and I can add you to that email and send it on your way. Send it to you so you have the link. Yeah, and I will probably send it out again early Friday morning, just so that the link pops back up in your email boxes. Good I idea. signed up to this uh, phone call late. And so the uh, links that were put in the chat before um, seven minutes after uh, are not in my chat. If you can put those back in. Yeah, I will do it right now. Oh, all right, cool. I think you only missed one. Yeah, I think so. I think it was just the, yeah, just the actual Google site that Mike made for the retreat. Yep. Is the, is the Padlet link also listed in the chat? It's embedded in the site. Okay. Yeah. It's all one page. Everything's right there. So we didn't have to go anywhere. You see how poorly I navigate my own calendar. So I got to keep <laughs> stuff in one page so I can get to it all. <laughs> So as we go through, let's see, did we get any other brainstorming ideas on there? Just want to look. Oh yeah, yeah. AT consideration evaluation in virtual settings. What, how, when, what changes from an in-person eval, which is a great question. I'm actually, that's one of my sessions at ATIA with Barbara Wellsford, um, where we had gotten together in the fall to talk about this, Barbara's from, um, Canada someplace. Canada. Yeah, I was trying to think of where in Canada, but Canada. Um, let's leave it broad. Sorry, <laughs> Canada. Um, uh, and that's what our session's about, how they kind of readjusted their service delivery model. 
um, with regards to virtual instruction and the kind of the changes in instruction, which I think is great, which I think could be a whole string of conversations at the unconference for sure. Just looking to make sure nobody else said anything. Okay, what else? What else should we talk about? We talked about the unconference. I have a really quick request. Go ahead, request. Rachel. Request. Yes. Kelly Suiting messaged me and asked if I had a um, job description for an AT specialist. I could not land on one. And I told her I was in this meeting and she said to throw it out to see if anybody had one there as well. Does anyone... I'm apparently now Kelly Suiting's henchman. <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, yeah, you're, yeah. Guys, let me know if you need anything in other meetings, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Henchman for hire. Um, I probably have the Florida LATS job description, although I will say that like I'm not hired as an AT specialist. I'm hired as an occupational therapist and then just applied to the AT. So I can send you the LATS job description for Florida or send it to Kelly. I don't know which. which <laughs> I'm popping her email address in here, so I don't need to, you know, facilitate that for her, but thank you so much. <laughs> I think that'd be great. Can you pre-look at it, Rachel, before it gets to Kelly, please? I was kind of hoping to, but. <laughs> I just sent Kelly one too that I had as well. Right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, because I, I had seen that someone had sent me something on Twitter um, and I don't have a job description like that, which is a strictly AT job description. So I'd have to dig around and look. So if I had henchmen, I would tell them to share that with you. But I don't. I'm my own henchman. <laughs> it's not a bad job. The pay is terrible. <laughs> but it's fun to be able to uh, henchmen. Hold on, the dog's barking. You know how you always are looking for something when you're not looking for it, you can find it. And when you're looking for it, it disappears no matter what you search for it in Google under. Lisa, I'm the same way. I'm like, what did I title that? And when it comes back to me, it's always really random. Yeah. Right. And not AT specialist, but like dream job, you know, <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Right. Exactly. I am pretty sure that naming things in a Google you know, drive is exactly the same as I'm going to put this someplace where I won't lose it. Right. How am I'm I going to not sure forget this? Mm -hmm. Try your and search it's great. though. It's great if you can Google search with the right category or string of words, but right. if you didn't, then you can't. <laughs> um, so maybe I have it. Maybe I don't, Rachel. <laughs> Does hey. Lats have it on their website somewhere? I'll let her know. <laughs> yeah, I failed in my duty. Yeah. Let her know. <laughs> I can go look because what I can put my fingers on is not, you know, what I'm actually looking for. It's uh, we we have this um, lats like AT specialist competencies versus IEP team competencies for assistive technology. Like what we want our IEP teams to know versus what we want our district like AT people to know. I found that didn't find the job description. That's really good. I kind of feel like we should take the opportunity to flood her inbox with hilarity. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to take this opportunity to do that with just random nonsense. Random memes. Bunches of links to things in my Google Drive. This might be it. No, this might be it. No, this might be it. And just. Doesn't or actually, much... just things you've been asked to do this year, right? <laughs> it doesn't take much prompting for me. And, you know, that's what Kelly gets for not making it to this meeting. I'm just. Yeah, that's oh. right. Exactly. And Sarah Gregory, I bet they would hire you in a heartbeat, but the commute might be a, a little bit long from Ithaca to- I, I've already told her, come to Florida. I would hire her in a heartbeat, come on down. But again, commute, kind of a killer. I'm trying to look up something at the same time. Um, I have this really nice document. Uh, here it is which is like a skills inventory, which is what you want members of your team to have in relation to provide, helping to provide AT services. It's from some work that I've been doing uh, in Michigan. I'll put the link to the PDF in here if I can figure out how to get to it. Well, and I guess maybe this bleeds me to a question of curiosity. Uh, 
how many of you are hired as AT specialist and how many of you are hired as I'm an SLP or an OT or something that, or a teacher that I'm on like special assignment to do AT. When I was an AT team member in my school district, the position was as an AT AAC specialist as a, as an SLP. SLP, but it was not like it was not it was not a job i wasn't just put in as a special assignment like it was it, the job description was different than like let's say an SLP. classroom oh, SLP. okay um uh, i can probably find that somewhere from some i mean i or i can i know the person i can ask for that i mean i'm no longer with the school district i was hired as an instructional coach for special education technology. And there's a basic instructional coach job description. Then there was like a subset for my position that is always in flux. I think it always comes in that it's like a part of some, right? You have a job description and these are those additional three or four bullets that fall underneath. Or pages. Yeah. Okay. Or pages, yeah. My exactly. favorite line is the and other duties as specified. Exactly. Yes. Other duties as assigned. So I'm the SDI facilitator for six school districts, which means everything. Like that means think about what specially designed instruction is. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. What isn't it? <laughs> um, what isn't it? <laughs> I haven't figured out what it's not yet. Yeah. It's yeah, it's good. interesting. I read something, an, an article somewhere is yesterday that I came across in my social media scrolling um, that said um, uh, uh, clues from clues from uh, colleagues not to take the job. You will wear many hats. Was what, <laughs> and I was actually thinking, but I like wearing many. I mean, like I get bored just wearing one hat. So on mine, I have additional working conditions. Work involves frequent disruptions of daily schedule. <laughs> Work involves strong organizational and communicational skills, and work requires travel to a variety of schools. But I think my favorite favorite is that first one: frequent oh, disruption. Yeah, frequent. You won't get anything done, basically. <laughs> when you are in your office, if people will interrupt you every five minutes. It is pretty great that they led with that. I'm a big fan <laughs> of leading with that. <laughs> Actually, that should be on every assistant principal's job description. Right. I was an assistant principal for three years and you never got anything done in your office. Maggie, were you asking about the document I posted or the document that Mike posted? Which was wrong. I posted. Oh. But then I fixed it. Sorry. No, the one you, that you, um, the AT competencies. So it was a, a Florida Department of Ed produced document. Um, there was a whole group of us that were on a statewide AT work group to yeah. kind of develop it. And then we had outside people from DOE kind of look at it. So we use it to guide our professional development. So my goal is that all my IEP team members know those things on the right-hand side. Are we there yet? No but it helps kind of define like who, like I don't expect them to know like all the intricacies of everything, but like, do they know they need to consider it every year? Cause that's what's an IDEA. Yes. Does that help? It does, thank you. Yeah, I just realized this version of it has no like Florida Department of Ed or anything on it. That's what I found in my Google Drive. So I'm sure there's one that's prettier that actually says like Florida on it, but. No, this is per, it looks, it, I, um, 2016, it looks familiar. I feel like um, I've seen it before. Would, some, would people have seen it before outside of Yeah, Florida? it's been shared. Um, I think Janet Good and her project are out of USF have shared out a bunch of stuff. Um, so it may have come out on Twitter or, or, or Facebook someplace, but, um, but yeah, it's been, it's, and it's someplace on the DOE website. I don't know where. I just have like 14 copies of it from the AT work group in my drive. So. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I like this document. Uh, the one I, you're, I was quality just indicator. Not my own. I like the one you shared. I, I, think oh, it's really I like yours. So really? Okay, so we're, we're good. We're, we'll trade off. 
doesn't the quality indicators of assistive technology also have maybe some of some pieces of that as well? Um, that might be just another resource to look at if you're looking for what to put into a job description. Yeah, I was going to say they break down like quality indicators of good consideration, quality of indicators of good implementation. Like I think theirs is way more, way more broader. -er. Wow. More comprehensive. Even more yeah, I, I, I think it's, I think it's a little different. I, I think when we're thinking job description, it's about personal um, areas of focus. I, I think the quiet indicators are really about systemic areas of focus. Departmental but, or district. Yeah, but could you do, I mean, I think you could easily pull things out and say, you know, the, the, the right candidate would understand quality implementation, blah, blah, blah. And you could list out a couple things. Indicators, um, I'm just looking on their website, indicator seven is administrative support for AT and under there, um, they do talk about um, having a written description of job requirements. So there might be some stuff in that indicator seven that um, kind of fits into um, that job description. Yeah, that does make sense. Kelly mm -hmm. says thanks, by the way, and I'm going to diligently work on pulling some of these things out for her. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think Mike records this, so she can always come back and watch our whole discussion about oh, that. She probably yes. wants to. <laughs> yeah. we'll just point her back towards the whole discussion, and then we'll go from there. Like, I wonder. Yeah. I'm relieved of your hunchman duties, right? Yeah. They just going to ask for somebody to like recap. Okay. What did I miss? I had to step away for a little bit, but yeah, it is being recorded. So I'll just back yeah. up. And well, back and I know that. in their book, which I'm looking in my cabinet and I must have either right? taken I it just, or loaned that's it out. I just did the same thing. Just I just up. Yep. Up. No. There's that one. And then there's the blue one, the, the, oh gosh, I did. I probably loaned it to somebody and it never have has returned, but yeah, that one right there, Leslie. And the one that Mike just held up. So I know that there's stuff in there. Like if somebody wanted to craft a job description, there's definitely stuff in those two books. And I'll go hunt down some Amazon links. So are you doing job descriptions for AT specialists? Or, or that was the question Rachel posed on her behalf, I believe. On Kelly's behalf? Yes. Okay. So this is interesting. So part of my work right now is to create job descriptions for AT specialists in districts but also start thinking about like ed tech folks, instructional tech folks, thinking about um, who are all the people, if we were to add little sub bullets to a job description within a district, what would those things be? So I'm just keep going guys, I'm so curious. Are you guys specifically thinking AT specialists though? Or like you were, that's how you got into the topic of, I'm an SLP, but I have this much AT on my plate, is that? Yeah. It, okay. it, it sounds like we're all basically working for Kelly right now through Rachel. Yeah. And, and, and Kelly's question was, is there a job description? An AT specialist job description. Wouldn't Kelly have, wouldn't she be working under an AT specialist job description? What is her actual title, hit, Rachel? Because I don't think it is, but it's not. It, you know what? It's part of it, but it, she has a lot of like specialty areas and also UDL in there. Yeah. And it's really long. Like I would never want to say her title out loud. Yeah, the way they, they, yeah, patents, they have their, their, the way they kind specialty of, areas. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if she needs it for patents or if she's it, like, maybe there's a school district that is looking to have. I can't imagine that it's for patents. Yeah. Honestly, because I don't think she'd be the person who would be throwing it out there. Right. But that being said, maybe things have shifted since I left the planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it would probably be Dan and, and, um, Daniel and um, David. David, but maybe, you know, maybe school districts are, are. So Mike, was one of those books you held up the yellow one? No, I don't have the yellow one. I have the blue one. I have the green one. I have a purple there's, one. There's a yellow one that came out last year. That's the just-in-time resource for implementing the quality indicators for assistive technology. That's that first link that I put with the note, the, the, the quiet I've never I hadn't seen the yellow one so Adjusting anybody seen that before let's see I have seen them hold up the yellow one before I'm just curious I'm gonna use Amazon's look inside and I'm going to look inside 
I'm just curious about what's the difference between the three of them now. Cause I realized I, I have two of them. I just didn't realize there was this third one. And you look inside. I have a thought of what the difference might be. And well, the, the blue one is the main indicators, right? The, the blue one is all of the indicators kind of blown out into chapters, right? So every, every indicator area becomes an, an in-depth chapter. Consideration, assessment, and it all and it goes all the way through. So every chapter is one of the indicator areas, and then it goes yeah, through the, the study. green one. The green one, I think, is the administrators. Yes, the green yeah. one's a little different. Yeah, the the green one's about creating, in my mind, about leading in a big picture structure. Service. So inside the yellow one, you ready? This is a heavy sentence. The quiet companion distills the information presented in the quality indicators for assistive technology, a comprehensive guide to assistive technology services, the blue one, in order to provide educators and families with efficient action-based resource. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I may have just spent my own money Really? Did you just buy it? No. <laughs> I, I I might be. Hey guys. Hey guys, it's Lauren. Sorry, I'm uh, in transit, so I've been listening. But um, I I wanted to say, you know, there was um in Chesterfield County in Virginia, there's a woman named Fiona Bussy, and she's got a hyphenated last name. And I apologize, I don't know exactly her name. She's an OT. She's working a lot on like ATP stuff for school-based folks. And I believe she did a research study on um, like the different areas that would be considered under an AT job description. I got to look for it. I remember um, we had to, they asked us in our school division for this, um, basically <laughs> because we didn't want to lose our jobs. We were like, oh, this is perfect. We can really like fight for um, our position and, and why we're necessary and all the areas that we do. So. There were like five to seven main areas and it was kind of similar to the quiet um systemic like review but anyway i'm gonna needless to say it's a little scattered but i'm gonna um look and see what i have and um if i have anything i will bring it next week or um i'll tweet it out if i can how do you spell the part of her name that you know um, it's Fiona is the first name, and then B U S S E Y is her last name, and it's hyphenated. That's the first of her last name. Do you see her? She's an ATP. She's in Chesterfield County, Virginia. Ah, uh, Judy's helping us out here. Fiona yeah. Bessie Bushnell. Bushnell, yes, yes, that's her. I found her. Anyway, so I'll do some digging, but she had some really, like a research study that she had done um, and uh, it yielded this sort of checklist of the different areas and what falls under equipment management and procurement and what falls under, you know, fixing equipment and what falls under assessments directly with students and training, et cetera. So, and it was really AT focused for like ATPs in the school. It was really um, well done. I'm totally so. stalking her Twitter right now that Leslie post posted. Yeah, to see if I, can find it. Right <laughs> I love it. I love it. You guys. And when she hears the recording i'm i'm working up to stalking her in a good way <laughs> yes. just so i can follow her and learn yes, yes we're going to include you in our discussion fiona <laughs> oh, look, so, fiona is is <laughs> great oh i was already following her i was yeah, like you know her without knowing her i know her without knowing yeah her. Oh my gosh, I'm like, I'm seriously dying because I texted Kelly and I said, hey, listen, we're still discussing this, right? Yeah. And, and she, she said, what, what is this? She, she said, somebody just randomly asked me. Somebody randomly asked me and I'm just trying to get an answer. It has that's nothing to do great. with anything that she's doing. I think that's amazing. I think it's right. awesome. Let her know that that same person randomly asked me too, right before I got on. I was like, oh, let me think about that. But now I don't have to, we've already thought. That's great. <laughs> I'm going to point that person I... towards this recording and we'll go from there. <laughs> Amazing. Beth, did I interrupt you? I'm so sorry. No, I was just saying she hasn't posted for a while on Twitter. She hasn't posted more than a year on Twitter. Not that that 
maybe she's a bad person. Right? <laughs> I was like, I, I, I'm not sure what to, how to interpret that. What, what do we mean by is, that? Like, obviously. Oh. Yeah. All I know is our, our, our meeting today has taken a very judgy turn. All of a sudden. Not at all. Oh my gosh. No, no, no. Okay. So why does my quiet companion not available for one to two months? If it was just published last year, the yellow book. Maybe try going to cast publishing. Maybe that might get you there too. Maybe. Because that's. I'm like, I don't want to wait one to two months. That's the you right want it. Answer. You want it in your, you know, two day free shipping prime. Right. I that's do. I mean. All about instant gratification now. But but if I could go back to that, what do we think the difference is between the blue and yellow book? So. I, I think based on looking at the pages in the yellow book, and maybe I can reach out to Kelly or Scott or Penny or Joy, and they can tell us more specifically, or maybe Judy, you know, I don't know. Um, it looks like there, it's lots of planning tools. I don't know if it's like the, the implementation resource guide to the other two. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'm on a Slack with Joy right now. Um, look, at, look at us problem solving. Okay, so the purple one is only for folks in New Hampshire. Um, it was created for them. just New Hampshire, yes, I should have said that. Part I have of their grant. One, that's only New Hampshire. But the yellow one is like the same thing, but for um, the same intent, except for um, different Not, authors. People so, outside of New Hampshire can read it. Uh, correct. Um, and... So let me ask her. Okay, I'm gonna be quiet now, and then I'll ask her. Um, I have the yellow book already, just in a different. What's the uh, the yellow and purple ones are both intended to be the nitty gritty of the original blue book, the do's, the actions yeah. for people who need to know things but are not committed to the level of the blue book. Okay, so the blue book is basically a, a lot to take in, right? And the yellow book, it seems I mean, it's, like from the blue book is is substantial. I just like because I was looking at the yellow book as like the workbook to help you right. both get through the blue book. And yeah. maybe that's not, I mean, that's. If the yellow's meant to be the same as the purple. So the purple book we we hand out as part of a, a grant that I do in New Hampshire and we hand it out to teams and it is meant to be easily digestible without the level of depth that maybe an assistive technology person might wanna go in, into. Yeah, because the in the foreword, it says the quiet companion, the yellow book provides educators, families and other decision makers with the information they need to work together to ensure that students who require AT would have what they need. Users may want to consult the blue book for more extensive information. Yeah, that makes sense. So going back to your thought, I don't know if you need to buy the yellow book if you have the blue book already. That's, I mean, I'm sure cast and, and the authors would say yes, but. I would think, and I'm sorry that I said it out loud, but I, <laughs> no, I, I think that if you were looking for a way to introduce the indicators to someone, an ed tech coach, a, a teacher that worked in your school, or maybe another therapist, I feel like the yellow book would be a, an easier entrance point. Because that's how I look at the purple book. I think the purple book is a great introduction and it's a wedding of the appetite, right? It's like, here's kind of the broad strokes and then we'll, we'll dive into them as we go and maybe work you towards the blue book. So I just have to share, cause I think it's hilarious. I'm on the Amazon site. Here's the green book. Then look down below. Customers who bought this book also <laughs> bought. This must be led by Mike Murata's purchasing. Uh, I was just going to say, I feel like that's my, my orders thing. <laughs> everyday instructional coaching. There's your moment of, of brevity. Yeah, I, I, I feel like Amazon was re is really stalking me right now. <laughs> creeping on you just based on your purchase habits. That's interesting. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Those other two books are fantastic, by the way. Oh, yeah, very, very good books. I just, books. I, I've never seen all three of them together. It's... Yeah. Oh, that's really funny. Yeah. No, that's good. All right. So we learned a lot. We learned about cast publishing and the differences in these books here. We have some links uh, for job descriptions, I think, as people continue to look on and, and try to find others. I, I, I think the indicators are not a bad place to start, actually. 
they talk about what you should be considering as an AT person in the context of delivering service. I think that's okay. I think you might have to kind of tease it out of there a little bit. Um, you know, I'm just trying to think of something because I don't have an actual real job description that says that, but I'm, I'm thinking there must be some out there. See, about, um, about one or two years ago, we had, a, we had to like list everything that falls under our scope of responsibilities, knowing the HR was going to tear it apart and not include most of it. <clears throat> right. So when we, you know, me and my colleague, we do have a des description that's AT in sense, but I also have liaison in my name, which I've called, you know, it's French for lazy. Um, <laughs> but it deals with technology, but then our assist assistant is not actually in my title, but it's liaison of EC technology, but then it gets thrown around and still people still call me assistive technology uh, for the special ed department. Uh, but ours got broken down through all those things. Like we do this, my colleague does AAC, I do vision, I do reading, she does access. We all both do access. Yeah. Um, but then none of that really makes it into the true, true job description I pulled up for our, uh, our school district. Um, so I think if it's a school district, and I pray everybody's out there for the school district agrees, it's going to be torn down to like all the scope that it looks like everybody else is inside of a school district was just a like inkling of hints of like, oh, you do something kind of different. Yeah, so. right. It's kind of what other people said. It's like one or two extra bullets there or something right before other duties as assigned. They'll drop in a couple that that kind of give it a bit of a focus. Because yeah. because I think, uh, Brian, I don't think they want you to your job description to be that much different from everybody else. Because then, right. then you then you fall into this specialist category of you, a, a much um, you could argue, which I would believe because I know you, a much higher level quality um, candidate. You know what I mean? You'd have. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm throwing you a compliment, Brian. Stick <laughs> it in, just live it in a little. <laughs> Well, and I think it does raise that question of, okay, if you're doing something that is a typical job plus extra responsibilities, how is that compensated? Right. Um, and I know, you know, depending on where you live, there's a, there, there's a big discrepancy, you know, like right now, OTs, SLPs, PTs, we're all paid on the teacher scale. Whereas if we were working outside, yeah, Leslie, same thing. If we were working outside in private practice, that would be like, a, a, there's a huge difference. Um, and whatever supplement I receive is not based on my AT duties. It's based on the fact that I'm the lead occupational therapist. So I, there's no compensation difference, which, I mean, I don't know how they would do that without completely moving people off to a different salary schedule. And I, I don't think that that's something that any union would want to touch because then you have all kinds of other people unhappy. Right. It's trying to get you into, they're trying to take your unique qualifications and squeeze them into the same box that everybody else lives in. Yeah, I run into that a lot because I'm in a public school setting mm -hmm. as the only AT person in the district. And it, it's definitely challenging because I still, because I was a teacher that moved into this role, you know, a lot of my evaluations fall under like the teacher licensing. And it's like trying to fit, you know, a round peg into a square hole type of thing, you know, and it doesn't always doesn't always work. <laughs> yeah, that's that's all our therapists. For the last couple of years, we've been working very hard to transition so that our evaluation doesn't say um, therapist will do lesson plans. Well, we don't do lesson plans. We do treatment plans. Um, but it's a huge, they don't, a lot of times they don't understand. And it's such a small minority in terms of the whole overall, like if you look at the sum total of all teachers, that nobody really gets why it's important for I mean, so yeah, we just end up like fudging at our evaluations and being like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's a lot of NA, you know, it's things that are NA and you kind of adjust. Leslie, does your job description actually say AT specialist? It does. Wow. But I'm also an, um, a technology, like an integrative technology specialist too. Yeah. So at any given point in time, like even this year, I took over, um, they reassigned me temporarily for two weeks in October to take over for a teacher who was out with COVID. So you know, at any point in time, you know, my job can be reassigned or made 0.5 or made point whatever they feel like they want to make it. So, um, you know, typically I have to say they really do value the position in my district and I'm typically left alone to do what I need to do, especially because I am the only one in the district. So once I disappear, then they're all like, ah, now what? <laughs> um you know even those two weeks like they everybody was like uh we need her back <laughs> so 
you know, at the end of that, I was, I was back and had a lot of work to do, but um, yes. Yeah, so my, my job description does have that though. I was just curious. Cassie, is your job description say AT specialist? My job description is AT specialist. Um, I'm the only one in the district. We've got four technology integration specialists. Um, so I think they kind of mashed up some of that and some special education and some AT and put it all together. Yeah. Um, I was trying to find it, but when they originally put it together, my background is um, emotional behavioral disabilities. And they were trying to find a way to work that into my contract too. So they actually had that as part of the job description, mm -hmm. um, doing behavior intervention plans and such. And then it got pulled out last minute. Um, so I can't find my current job description that has that pulled out, um, even though that still falls under other duties as assigned quite regularly. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, I actually asked my director last year if I could just have a new job description that says magic fixer of all things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I was living very heavily under other duties as assigned. Yeah. Um, but yeah, mine is AT specialist and kind of like Leslie, I'm the only one district wide. So I end up a little bit of everywhere doing a little bit of everything. Yeah, right. So Cassie, yeah. Leslie, I have a question. Do you like your counterparts, your instructional, Leslie, I think you said that you, you have part-time maybe ed tech or instructional technology. Do your folks have any AT bullet points or inclusive technology components to their job description. That's a big fat now. <laughs> no, I mean, in my district, they're wonderful and they've definitely, they're interested in learning a lot about what I do. They're definitely willing to jump in and help, but it's not part of their job description. And it's any not way. a formal expectation. No, I will say, so one of our, so we, we're not a relatively large district just because we're only elementary, but um, one of the instructional technology people, she also supports me in terms of not so much like the AT, but she does all of my setup. So mm -hmm. she's like me, my behind, like she's my Oz. You know, that's what I always say. Like she's the man behind the curtain. Um, so I don't manage that component of it where she, you know, we have a very good process. She's extremely organized. I'm extremely organized. So like it's a fluid process of, you know, the requests and referrals come to me. She, I run them through her. She sets everything up for me. Once it's all set up, it comes back to me and then I do the implementation. But you know, so I do have the support in that aspect, but when she's pushing into the classroom, you know, she's really doing more of like STEAM, you know, instructional technology, but I mean, she's very knowledgeable in terms of what I do because she's supporting me on the back end. Um, so it's good. And I will kind of say from our district standpoint, our uh, technology team has adopted me um, from special education and it's been wonderful. I mean, they meet weekly and they pull me in. So every week I get to kind of know what uh, our TIS staff are doing and what they're seeing district wide. Um, sometimes the meetings don't have as much to do with me. Um, and a lot of times they really do. And I'm able to kind of feed things in and make suggestions there. So, I mean, it's been really great in that regard. Um, I was very happily adopted there. Um, they've got great communication. And so, I mean, it, it works out very well. So even though it's not part of their job description, they definitely kind of ebb and flow with me as needed. Yeah, I like the way Maggie was thinking though, wouldn't it be great if all of those jobs had just one or two bullets in there that made it something that they had to consider inclusive technology or something like that. I really liked where Maggie was going because I, I got that right away. I was like, oh, that would be awesome if that happened. Just like we have the couple bullets that are pretty AT specific in what becomes a standard job description for a tech person and then it adds it in. It'd be nice if we saw that reciprocated back into the other tech people. Yeah. Cassie, did they maintain your instructional tech? Because that was where our positions all got cut this year. You know, that was a bit, we downsized tremendously because of COVID. Um, so anybody that was pretty much at what's considered like a TOSA, um, you know, they were sent into classroom positions. I really am probably the only one left that wasn't touched, but did that happen in your district too? Actually, not at all. We were very blessed to have the exact opposite happen. Our technology integration specialists have become even busier than they were, if that's possible. No, they've definitely held on to the technology because we've been, uh, you know, went one to one Chromebooks. We've been out of, you know, virtual learning. We've been doing blended learning and our TIS have been really integrated into all of that. So no, that hasn't been, at least that has ever come near me. There's been not even a rumor about removing that. So we've been very blessed in that regard. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, it's so true. I think they know that they would kind of, I mean, all the calls for everything that's going wrong would then have to go to somebody else. 
Right. Yeah. Ultimately, yeah. You build a system and then they start to realize, well, we need that system to continue working in order to keep us rolling. Yeah. A lot of people would be getting a lot of emails that they don't want if they took away the integration specialists. Mm -hmm. You know, if we were going to be idealists, we should see a paragraph about assistive technology in all teaching positions. Yeah. Integrating I assistive agree. technology into the classroom for... Yeah. And administration. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's change the world. Yeah, let's do that. But unfortunately, we can't do it today because it's already 102. <laughs> so it's gonna, the world will have to sit the way it is for another week. Oh, man. I know. Um, last thoughts before I let you guys go. I know people have been drifting off as we've gotten closer to the top of the hour. Um, a few of us had discussed on Friday sticking around to do a little mini recording. Are we going to do that right yes. now? That I'm was the same. Alyssa just reminded me to do that. So yes, we'll say the official goodbye to the town hall. And then if you want to stay to be part of that, I'll start another recording right up. All right, hold on one second. Here we go. Thanks all right, for bye. answering all my questions, guys. Yeah, See thanks you later. Thanks for yeah, it was great. It was really good bye. conversation. Thanks for slacking with joy and getting the info right from it. That was perfect. See, slacking when you say it like that makes it sound like you were like being lazy, but no. yet. No, I meant it like. It's highly cool productiveness. Because if nothing else, I'm cool and hip. <laughs>